we have already talked about reliability. We have talked about instruments of measure. Let's put them together. A finding is as good as the instrument. A conclusion is as good as the tool you use to arrive at that conclusion. And therefore, in quantitative research, reliability of the instrument of measure is an important dimension. And so in the sixth lecture, we are talking about reliability of the instruments of measure. Now, in this lecture, we will talk about three major things to understand what is reliability, what are the types of reliability, and then we talk about how we handle the issue of reliability of measures when we collect data, before collecting data, and after collecting data. So let us revise very quickly what is reliability of an instrument. It is a confidence that this instrument, when used under the same circumstances, with a similar population, will produce similar results. If an instrument is capable of producing similar results under similar circumstances, then that instrument is reliable. Of course, here we are not discussing about validity. Let us focus on reliability. There are at least four types of reliability when we talk about reliability of instruments, particularly in quantitative data. As you can see in the slide, the first type of reliability is what we call internal consistency reliability. What does it conceptually mean? Let us say, if you are, if you are measuring a variable using a multiple item scale, then it is likely that there could be items that are similar to each other. So, if a participant has marked two uh, out of a Likert scale of seven in one item, then the same participant should have marked two in a similar item that is within the same scale. Now, that we call internal consistency reliability. Of course, you are not going item by item, participant by participant to, to check this out. Uh, statistical analysis will do it for you. And so uh, this is what we will finally talk about. So first type of reliability is what we call internal consistency reliability. The second type of reliability is what we call inter-rater reliability. And inter-rater reliability is almost related to even validity. Inter-rater reliability increases the possibility that your finding is going to be more true. For instance, inter-rater reliability is, let us, take, let us say, I take a test for a personality type. And uh, I measure myself as I being a particular uh, personality type. Now, if the same questionnaire, same instrument is given to another person, say like my friend, or like my parent, who assesses me, and then when we put together these two assessments, how I rated my own self, and somebody else, how they rated me according to their perception, and if we put them together, uh, if they relate each, to each other to 100%, then that inter-rater reliability is the ideal. It's high. So, uh, this we call inter-rater reliability. The third type of reliability is test-retest reliability. An instrument is reliable when, let us say, I give this uh, scale to one person, let us say women empowerment, you give it to a woman uh, today, then you give the same instrument to the same woman a month from now, assuming that nothing drastic has happened in her life in this month, then she should score the same level as she scored a month ago, which means this scale has test-retest reliability. Particularly when you're doing experiments, 
uh, items or the scales should have very high test retest reliability only then we can make sure that the change in the score is not because of a fault in the scale itself but because of the intervention that you have given so test retest reliability the fourth type of reliability is what we call split half reliability let us say you collected data from 100 participants uh, using a particular scale that has 10 items. Now, if you split your participants into 50-50 and you compare uh, the results at random, then it should be the same. So this is called split half reliability. So in short, what are we saying? You can read more about this, but we, there are many ways of talking about reliability of a scale, and there are many ways of measuring the reliability of uh, instruments of measure. Now, let us deal with internal consistency reliability, because they are statistically verifiable. And how you handle this reliability before you collect data, and after collecting data. Now, before collecting data, once you have chosen the instrument of measure, you are going to do some literature review on this measure. You download articles or you read articles that have previously examined this scale and used this scale in their research. What is the reliability level that they are reporting? you have to summarize those reliability reports in your method section where you are describing your instrument. So in the method section, under the instruments of measure, you will say which variable is measured using which scale and what is the level of reliability and validity, different types of reliability that is, have been reported in the previous research for a particular scale. So before collecting data, we need to have an assurance that this scale has good reliability levels from previous studies. In fact, a scale would not be published as a standardized measure if it does not have a good reliability level. So the very fact that you're using it uh, then it is already having a good reliability uh, from previous reported uh, researches. And that is the advantage of using a ready-made scale, as I have said in a previous lecture. Now, what do you do after collecting data? Before you start analyzing the research, uh, the, your whole data, you must first analyze the reliability of the measures that you used and you must report it in your results section. And one way of measuring statistically the internal reliability of the scales that you have used is using Kronbach's alpha. So let us briefly talk about how to use Kronbach's alpha in the SPSS platform for the purpose of verifying internal validity or internal reliability measures. So, in the SPSS, once you're familiar with the SPSS, it becomes easier to do this. You would go step by step to analyze menu, you would go to scale menu, sub menu and choose the reliability analysis, select the items and make sure that you have ticked the Kronbach's alpha uh, option. And then what the, the computer does, what SPSS does, is to check for these sort of patterns in the answer of individuals, whether they have consistently answered the items which are in the same dimension. So if you're measuring women empowerment in terms of five items, let us say, or 10 items, then there should be an internal consistency with which individuals have answered for similar items. And it is going to check for that and it will report the level of the alpha level. We call it the alpha level. So the letter that is used to indicate 
Cronbach's uh, alpha is a Greek uh, letter alpha. And we say alpha is equal to 0 0.7, 0 0.8. That means it has 80% reliability was there. The ideal reliability is 1, which means there was 100% reliability. So if you look at this, uh, the slide, how to interpret the Cronbach's alpha? If your alpha was more than uh, or equal to 0.9, then it is excellent. Between 7 and 9 is good. Between 6 and 7, acceptable. Between 5 and 6, acceptable, poor. But if it was below 0.5, then you cannot take your uh, results seriously. And so it is going to question the rest of your results. So you see the importance of reporting the reliability levels of your measures uh, or your scales. And this is an important point uh, and it's actually it should be done as a matter of fact and it's easy to do so. So the way you would report now is there are two ways. You can, if you have many scales and many variables, then for each variable you would put in a column and say how many items did this variable have in your scale, what was the mean score, what was the alpha level. But if your research was simple enough between sort of two variables, then you don't need to go for a table. You would just narrate it in the main text, say that the reliability levels for the scales that you used were uh, very high. And now within brackets, you give alpha was equal to 0 0.7, 0 0.8, whatever the case. And so reliability of the measures that we use.